If you've ever been on Stan Twitter, like ever, you will know that whenever given the opportunity, Stans will fight. Actually, scratch that, most don't even need the opportunity. In the replies of any completely benign tweet, you will often find a Stan attempting to drag an artist, resulting in an eloquent war of words between rival Stans, leading to many a retweet attempting to conscript additional Stans into the battle for reinforcements to fight over whether a celebrity is or isn't a flop. Kind of like an elaborate game of chess, just without the little clocks. And in order for a stan to defend their fave from supposed flop status, they like to use statistics. And one of the best stats a stan can have in their arsenal is a number one on the Billboard Hot 100. And some stans will do anything, and I mean anything, to help get their fave to number one. Here's the story of the Taylor Swift stan who, allegedly, committed credit card fraud in their attempt to get Taylor Swift to number one. Disclaimer, the views of the stans mentioned in this video are not my own and all the information in this video is alleged. Additionally, the actions of the stands in this video are their own and in no way connected to or affiliated with Taylor Swift, nor are their actions responsible for gaining Taylor Swift her charting achievements. Furthermore, this video is not promoting or encouraging crimes or criminal activity in any way, shape or form. Crime is bad, no matter how much you love Taylor Swift. Also, this incident did allegedly go to the police back when it occurred, so I'm not like breaking a story or anything or making a video about something that really I should be down the station talking about, if that makes sense. But who am I kidding? None of this makes any sense. And finally, thank you to this account for their thread, which helped me fill in the gaps. A modern day Herodotus. He was like the first historian ever. I googled it. On the 23rd of July 2020, Taylor Swift, you should know who that is, and if you don't, I don't know what to tell you at this point, made the following announcement. Surprise, tonight at midnight I'll be releasing my 8th studio album Folklore, an entire brand new album of songs I've poured all of my whims, dreams, fears and musings into. The surprise release of Taylor's album Folklore was polar opposite to the rollout of her previous album Lover, which followed a more traditional album release timeline and so Swifties, Taylor Swift fans, were all shook. And on the 24th of July, the day of the album's release, Taylor posted a music video on YouTube for the track Cardigan, the lead single from the album. With the release of the album having a surprise drop and the lead single being released simultaneously, the race was on for Swifties who were aiming to get number one on both the Billboard's album chart and the Hot 100. Because if they didn't, not only would they be disappointed for Taylor, but they would also be in for a rough couple of years on Twitter as rival stands would bring it up at every possible moment to drag Taylor and would provide an easy comeback for when a Swifty is dragging someone else's fave. As I say, chess. But debuting both Cardigan and Folklore at number one on their respective charts in the same week wouldn't be an easy feat, as it had never been done before. Like, ever. And so Swifties began to come up with some, let's say, creative methods to help get Taylor Swift that number one. One Swifty attempted some sort of ritual to manifest Cardigan as number one on the charts, while others began to raise funds by selling various things in order to purchase more copies of the song and album. But there was one stan who was willing to do the most, in every sense of the word, to get more folklore sales, and that stan was Tay Lucifer 95. Following the release of Folklore, Tay Lucifer 95 95, like most Swifties at the time, was consistently checking the early predictions of the Billboard charts and began using the hashtag buy Cardigan, encouraging people to buy and stream the song. Exile is selling more copies than Cardigan right now, go buy it or gift it or anything, we need stability. Hashtag buy Cardigan. During this week there was a bit of a temporary ceasefire between some stands, with standums like Billie Eilish's, Adele's and Demi Lovato's coming together to promote and stream Taylor Swift's new music. And just to give you a brief insight, into the type of person the owner of Tay Lucifer was, they responded, love this song, let's go Lovatics, let's stream Cardigan together, with a picture of them streaming Demi Lovato's music but with the volume on zero. Shady. So as you can see, Tay Lucifer was known for having a bit of a troll vibe, which would soon become a criminal one. And Tay Lucifer's criminal era officially began on the 29th of July, 2020, five days after Folklore's release, when Tay Lucifer tweeted, a Swifty really used someone else's credit card to buy cardigan and may go to jail. Help. This was in reference to someone who was allegedly leaking credit card information to which a random Taylor Swift fan had allegedly used to buy copies of cardigan. Then, Taylor Lucifer responded to a tweet of someone leaking card information with an image of an order summary for a cardigan CD and a deluxe alternate cover edition of Folklore totaling $18, captioned, Thank you so much King, this is the happiest day of my life. Taylor Lucifer's happiness, however, was short-lived when they realised what they 
had done. Wait, can I go to jail for using someone else's credit card even though they were the ones who leaked it? I'm over. But Tay Lucifer was far from over. Clearly worried about the crime they may or may not have just committed, Tay Lucifer shared a screenshot from a criminal solicitor's website about one-off fraud offences. Wait, six months in jail and community service? This isn't that bad. I'll get to see Taylor Swift's ninth era. Perhaps fueled by the knowledge that their prison visit could only amount to six months, Taylor Lucifer entered full criminal mode. The credit card got locked, so here's a new one. I'm leaking it, but use it only to buy cardigan. It should work. Attached was, allegedly, an image of someone's card details. Taylor Lucifer soon realised that they had in fact committed a different crime, leaking rather than just using a card, and became worried about their hopeful six-month sentence. Taylor Lucifer's account went on to become restricted for sharing private information, but they refused to be silenced. And still hungry for that number one, Taylor Lucifer began to switch up their tactics. Since leaking credit cards is a crime, and I already committed it once, I have a new strategy. I will be forging Taylor's signature and selling copies on Craigslist. Let's go. With all their little crime operations in motion and publicly documented on their timeline, Taylor Lucifer's antics soon began to be noticed by other Swifties. You really want jail. OMG, my good sis going to jail. Stop it, we are all going to end up in jail at this rate and cardigan streams will go down. But unfortunately for Taylor Lucifer and their future defence lawyer, things weren't over just yet. Early predictions of the chat were showing that DaBaby's rock star was on track for another week at number one, with Cardigan debuting at number two. So, the streaming and buying war for Swifties was still on and Taylor Lucifer's whatever you call all of this, continued. Imagine all the free promo we would get if I actually went to jail. OMG, cardigan number one for 20 weeks, FBI come get me. As early predictions were also showing The Last Great American Dynasty, another song off the Folklore album, was predicted to debut just outside the top 10, Taylor Lucifer began to make another push for fellow Swifties to buy and stream the song. Now we should keep streaming cardigan, but we should also start pushing The Last Great American Dynasty so it can enter the top 10. Stream those two songs and by The Last Great American Dynasty on iTunes, we're around eight points behind. And soon, Taylor Lucifer's crime spree continued. That's it, I'm leaking another credit card, I'm getting American Dynasty this top ten, think I found my next credit card target, y'all give me a sec. Y'all try this credit card and tell me if it works, I'm deleting soon. OMG, try this one too. But some of the Swifties weren't so enthusiastic about the whole operation and had concerns about going to jail. You know, like a normal person would have. Anyway, Taylor Lucifer went on to purchase some folklore merch, although it's unclear whether this was with their own money or someone else's, but it wasn't long before Taylor Lucifer's lawless world came crashing down. On the 29th of July 2020, yes, all of this has occurred within a single day, Taylor Lucifer 95 shared an email that they had allegedly received from Amazon. The order you have cancelled appears to have a credit card that has been reported as stolen. Your address has been sent to the authorities. If we have made a mistake, reply to this email at Amazon support. Thank you for your patience. Wait, my address was sent to the authorities. Let me read that again. The alleged report to the authorities was enough to solidify in both the minds of Swifties and Taylor Lucifer themselves that the the owner of Taylor Lucifer would in fact be going to jail. If the authorities go through my phone, y'all going down too, this ain't funny anymore. Followers of Taylor Lucifer and fellow Swifties set up a GoFundMe in order to raise funds for Taylor Lucifer when they eventually would go to jail, which raised approximately $18. Use it to buy cardigan. I'm going to jail, not me voice acting. And one Swiftie even reached out to Taylor herself to try and raise funds. This DM obviously went unanswered as this is nothing to do with Taylor. Please don't sue me. During this time, Taylor announced the release of an alternate cardigan song, Cabin in the Candlelight version, and the sales of this version would also count towards the original cardigan song on the Billboard charts. And how did Taylor Lucifer react to this news? Not me going to have to leak more credit cards to buy the new version of cardigan. It's unclear from what has been archived whether Taylor Lucifer did leak any more card info for the new cardigan version, but what we do know is that soon after, Taylor Lucifer decided to come clean. Gonna go talk to my parents about my next move now y'all. Just want to make it clear that if I have to expose y'all for a plea deal, I will. Taylor Lucifer went on to tweet at Taylor Nation, an official fan page for Taylor Swift, who notoriously invites Swifties to secret sessions where they get to meet Taylor and listen to her upcoming albums early, that was a mouthful, and asked them to post their bail. Taylor Lucifer eventually decided that they would tell their dad about their, uh, 
problem on the following day and went to bed thinking about what decor they would have in their jail cell. And they also feared their imminent arrest. I swear my heart stops a little every time I hear sirens near my house. I played myself. On the 30th of July, the next day, Taylor Lucifer tweeted, my dad just woke up y'all, I'm gonna tell him about the Amazon jail email, if I don't come back y'all know who did it. Tay Lucifer went on to tweet a series of tweets about how their dad was angry and was confiscating their phone, so they locked themselves in the bathroom and then later counted down until they would be offline. Later in the day, the account tweeted, just got serious y'all, I don't know if I should laugh or cry or both. I don't know how to explain it, I think this is a goodbye for now. And then the account went inactive. Following their final tweet, the whole Tay Lucifer is going to jail became a bit of a meme within the fandom and Swifties began to use the hashtag Free Sophia to share their support and sometimes their concerns for Sophia, the owner of the account, demanding that they be freed from prison. She did what we were too afraid to do. Hashtag Free Sophia. Guys, today one of us went to jail. Reply with hashtag free Sophia to show your support to our fallen hero. Soon, Swifties set up several change.org petitions for the release of Sophia from jail, one of which gained over 600 signatures. Release her, this isn't Tay Tay's last album, we need her for Taylor Swift 9. With absolutely no word from Tay Lucifer, not even a phone call from behind a piece of perspex, and with the tracking week for the charts slowly coming to a close, the Swifties could only wait to see if it had all been worth it. On the 3rd of August 2020, four days after Tay Lucifer's disappearance, Billboard announced that Cardigan was number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and Folklore was number one on the album's chart, making Taylor Swift the first artist in history to debut at the top spot of both charts in the same week. Once again, I'm not saying that this was because of Tay Lucifer's actions. Swifties celebrated that their streaming and buying efforts hadn't been in vain, but there was still one Swiftie who wouldn't get the news for a few more days. On the 6th of August, three days after the announcement, Tay Lucifer returned, tweeting, Cellmate saying y'all need help getting Exile to number one, another track off the album. Immediately after, Tay Lucifer tweeted at Taylor Nation, asking on behalf of a friend whether they check criminal background records before inviting Swifties to a secret session. You can't blame them for trying. Following their return, some Swifties were sceptical about whether or not Tay Lucifer had actually committed fraud and had gone to prison. Did you actually commit credit card fraud? Yes. And what about it. And I know you're wondering, did jail time change Tay Lucifer for the better? Were they a reformed stan? No, they weren't. I would go to prison for Taylor Swift again. You know, prison food isn't even that repulsive. Just don't sing Taylor Swift in the shower. And after catching all the Swifties up on their prison experience, Tay Lucifer finally reacted to the news that Cardigan was number one. Taylor Swift, I am so proud of you. After all of these years of proving your legacy in every way possible and moving a generation of both men and women to become just like you, you got your well-deserved number one. It was an honour fighting for you. Ugh, it just brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it? The Tay Lucifer 95 jail era is now regarded as an inside joke within the Taylor Swift fandom, with some Swifties believing that the jail stint was faked. The possibility that the whole thing was fake is actually highly plausible, as they did tweet about going inactive for a couple of weeks prior to their disappearance, and didn't mention anything about jail in the tweet, and also the Amazon email didn't look too authentic. So it's unlikely that they actually committed any type of fraud, and we can presume that the card information that they posted were in fact fake too. At least, I hope it was. Much later along on the timeline, the Tay Lucifer 95 account was suspended and the at was taken over by a different stan. However, the legacy of Tay Lucifer 95 remains, with their account having been immortalised on Urban Dictionary, saluting their efforts during the folklore era to be remembered throughout history. Just to reiterate, I am not suggesting in any way that Taylor Swift got her number one because of Taylor Lucifer or due to any shady or criminal activity, nor am I encouraging or promoting criminal activity within this video. Also, I'm like 95% sure Taylor Lucifer was joking. Only 95 though. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you didn't like this video, please don't sue me. I love your music, Taylor.